Hello everyone, I am Sonali, Assistant Professor in Botany, presenting to you this video lecture on the topic Reproduction and Economic Importance of Pinus. This video is part of an initiative by DHE Haryana. Here, we will first discuss about the fertilization in pinus followed by embryogeny that is development of embryo, seed formation and seed germination and at last economic importance of plant pinus. So let us start this lecture with fertilization. Fertilization is the fusion of male and female gametes, their nuclei and cytoplasm to form a new generation which is represented by zygote. So the first step for making fertilization possible, it is important male and female gametes are brought together. This is done by wind as pollinating agent. Wind transfers pollens from male pinus cones to female pinus cones. In female pinus cones, when it is one year old, bract scales move a little causing the cone to open and letting pollens inside the cone. After this, bract scale moves back to its position and the female cone again closes into a tightly closed structure. The pollen grain gets trapped in a mucilaginous drop secreted by nucellus cells at micropylar end. Later, this fluid dries up and pollen rests there for about a year before fertilization can begin. The point to remember here is that both male and female gametophyte are not completely developed to form gametes when pollination occurs. The pollens are at four cell stage with two prothelial cells, one endothelial cell and one tube cell. Whereas in female cone, there is crassinucellate nucellus surrounded by a unitegmic layer. So, during this resting period of pollen, female gametophyte develops. When the egg cell is formed, pollen starts to germinate forming pollen tube. The pollen tube grows through the neck cells and reach archegonial chamber inside the nucellus. Developmental divisions also take place in pollen and 3 cell divides into stalk cell and body cell and body cell forms two unequal male gametes. Tube cell helps in pollen tube growth. Now as the pollen tube reaches archegonial chamber, the wall of pollen tube gets disintegrated because of action of pectinase and chitinase enzymes which are secreted by egg cell. This causes pollen tube to burst open releasing two unequal male gametes, stalk cell and tube nucleus in that chamber. The larger male gamete reaches the egg cell and releases nuclei into the egg cell. The smaller male gamete degenerates while larger male nuclei and egg cell nuclei fuse. First, the fusion is only of nucleus. Cytoplasm of both the gametes fuse later forming neocytoplasm. The neocytoplasm has more maternal mitochondria and more paternal plastids. And the resulting structure of this fusion is known as 
sei gut. Now, let us take a look at the events to follow after zygote is formed. Zygote readies itself for the formation of embryo and before that it makes pro-embryo. So, the nuclei of zygote undergoes free nuclear division. As a result, 8 nuclei are formed towards the chalazal end. Wall formation takes place and Two tiers of cells are formed with four cells in each tier. As you can see in figure C, upper tier marked as PU and lower tier is marked as PE. PE is responsible for embryo formation. This can also be called as pro-embryo stage. One thing to note here is that upper wall of cells in upper tier is not formed, it remains open. Cells of both tier divide further adding more tiers. Upper tier PU forms upper cell layer and lower S tier that is suspensor cells and to be more precise dysfunctional suspensors. Whereas Lower tier PE forms upper embryonal suspensor cells and lower proper embryonal cells. Embryonal suspensor cells divide and elongate pushing embryo proper deeper into archegonium and proper embryonal cells go on to divide and differentiate into proper embryo. Here in this flow diagram also same process is explained. Zygote nuclei divides form 8 nuclei. Wall formation takes place. Two tiers of cells are formed. Upper tier forms upper cells and a tier of dysfunctional suspensor cells. Whereas lower tier forms embryonal suspensor in middle and embryonal mass towards the tip that is towards the chalazal end. This condition where embryo is formed by the cells of zygote that are towards chalazal end is known as endoscopic development and it is a characteristic feature of gymnosperms. Now moving on to the next big step for embryo formation known as embryogeny. Embryogeny is the formation of proper mature embryo from pro-embryo or embryo initials. For that, the important thing that cells need is food. And embryonal suspensor cells help in that matter. Embryonal suspensor cells divide and elongate causing embryonal cells at tip to get pushed deeper into archegonium. Archegonium gets transformed into haploid endosperm and provide nourishment to the developing embryo. The embryonal cells at the tip cleave into four separate units of embryo giving rise to a condition known as cleavage polyembryony which again is a characteristic feature of gymnosperms. Out of all these embryonal units the one that could grow deeper into endosperm is the one able to mature into proper embryo. Other embryonal units get degenerated. So only one mature embryo is formed. Now the embryo divides into hemispherical apex towards cherizal end and towards the suspensor end of embryo root cap develops. Another major event is formation of 
hypocotyle between epicotyle and root axis the region between root axis and cotyledons is known as hypocotyle as you can guess from the word hypo means below so below the cotyledons and the region above cotyledons up to shoot axis is known as epicotyle epi means above so above the cotyledons and at last shoot apex is formed followed by formation of 3 to 18 cotyledons this is polycotyledonous condition again a feature of gymnosperms here is a image showing embryonal cells embryonal units suspensor cells cotyledons hypocotyle so that you can have an idea of how the embryo is developing now after the embryo has formed let us take a look at how the whole structure is developing as seed pinus seeds are winged as you can see in the picture also wings are contributed by ovuliferous scales also the seed of pinus contains three generations in it first generation is embryo which is a new sporophytic generation second one is endosperm which was made by parent gametophytic generation and third and last is perisperm which is remains of parent sporophytic generation now on the right side is a longitudinal section of seed of pinus the outermost covering is seed coat made of testa and tegmen which are actually transformed middle so stony sclerotesta and inner fleshy sarcotesta outer sarcotesta disintegrates next to seed coat is haploid endosperm next is embryonal axis with polycotyledons on top at base you can see remains of new cells as gap and remains of suspensor cells after knowing the structure of seed let's see how pinus seed germinate here in this picture you can see different stages of germination in pinus seed the germination is of epigeal type that is long hypocotyle is formed which brings the cotyledons and seed coat out of the soil surface cotyledons are linear green structure and will provide nourishment to the new plant body before true leaves are formed hence they are known as cotyledonary leaves next new juvenile leaves are formed that take over the function of photosynthesis for the plant and this is how new pinus plant is formed now let us discuss what is the economic importance of this plant which we are studying in such detail first of all it's a tree so its wood is of great use the wood of pinus is hard coarse grained heavy strong and moderately durable it is used for making furnitures floorings house fittings railway wagons bridges ship building log houses and in construction works it is also used as firewood and very commonly used by locals as fuel for cooking 
It is also used in making matchsticks and packagings. The wood of pinus has some fragrance to it which one can feel or smell when it burns. The next major use of pinus is it produces resin. You can see in the right picture how the main stem is scarred diagonally to create a wound so that from that wound resin can be collected. Resins are plant exudate, makes the wood resistant to decay. They have insecticidal properties. They are insoluble in water but soluble in organic solvents. They are used in paper sizing, varnishes, plasters, enamels. Resins also has insecticidal property hence used as insecticide and disinfectant. Another extract from pinus of commercial use is turpentine oil. It is an essential oil which is obtained through distillation of resins, steaming of wood chips being few methods. It is often used in paints, varnish thinners, polishes, crayons. Because of its medicinal property, it is also used in medicated soaps. Other uses of pinus include edible seeds of chilgoza pine, which is pinus gerardiana. They are important food item in regions where they grow, that is from Tibet to Afghanistan. The cones and seeds are roasted before consumption. These seeds are enriched with magnesium, phosphorus, vitamins, zinc, iron and dietary fibers. Use of pine cone as decorative pieces is also very popular. The tree is also grown for landscaping and aesthetic purpose. Now, it is not that only uses or good properties are considered as properties of economic value. How it can affect negatively is also part when we discuss about its economic importance or significance. Although pinus is an evergreen tree, the older needles when shed covers the ground almost completely where the tree is growing. The thing about these dry needles is that they catch fire very easily, hence can cause huge forest fires which sometimes become difficult to contain because they cover almost all of the ground and hence negatively impact the environment sometimes also causing loss of property in those fires. So this was all about pinus plant and now we have come to an end of this lecture but before wrapping up this I would like to leave you with a question. Can you find any other economic importance of pinus plant? If yes, do share in comments. Thank you for watching.